Hello and welcome back to another video about height fields. So in this video we'll be going over the mask by feature node, the height field terrace node, the mask clear node and the blur node. So we have a lot to get through so let's get right to it. So um, yes let's get started with the mask by feature node. So in here you can see um, a normal looking terrain but with a bunch of stepping going on in certain areas, not all. Uh, this is caused by the mask by feature and the height field terrace node. So let's get started with the mask by feature. In this case I set it to mask by slope um, and what it does is it'll take certain areas of your terrain and it'll mask it depending on how large the slope is. So here you can see our minimum slope angle is 10 and our maximum is 90. So let's actually change or 45. Uh, let's change this to 90 and 0. So what this slope ramp indicates is that everything will be masked except for the most outer values. So as we can see, that's very true. So these are truly flat areas and they are not uh, masked. So we can change this by grabbing these dots and moving them around. So here I'm moving the minimum to the right and as you can see larger parts of the train are starting to get unmasked. So this can be a very useful tool if you want to for instance uh, determine where um, precipitation would be falling or where um, rocks would spawn so you can use these masks to um, to mask those areas out and I'll get to how you can use these masks on for instance geometry placement in a future video so stay tuned for that so yeah uh, using this um, this ramp I am able to mask out certain areas and leave other areas out the height field terrace then takes that and uses this mask to, um, well, terrace the um, height field. But as you can see, we can't really see it very well because the areas where it's most red is, you know, where the most terracing is happening. So we can clear this mask away by using the height field mask clear node. And as you can see, it fully just disappeared now. Now going over the height field terrace. Um, if you press the compute range button, it'll be sure to set the minimum and maximum height of the height field. So you'll set the full range. And uh, otherwise you want to worry about the step size and smooth edges. There's a bunch of output layers, but they're not important for now. So the step size does exactly what it says and it determines how large the steps are. And you can see whilst I'm changing this, it is also changing how large these steps are. So let's put them to uh, 30 now for kind of a noticeable effect. And if we smooth the edges, it'll do just that. So it'll smooth them by a lot. But if we unsmooth them, you'll get these very hard transitions. Now this can actually be useful if you want to, for instance, later manipulate this and do the blurring or smoothing yourself. But let's keep it at about five, which is the default. Now the minimum and maximum height, if we change this, it changes where the um, terracing appears. So I'm going to middle mouse click on this again and with the 1 I'm going to move it up. So as you can see, the terracing is slowly starting to disappear from the bottom up. And that is because we're adjusting the minimum height. And the same happens when we adjust the maximum height. If we lower this, um, we only have a very specific spot that gets affected by the terracing now. And we can change this out by maybe lowering the terrace size. Now only this very specific ring uh, will get affected. And because it is only using uh, these areas, so the areas that we just masked out, you've got a very specific selection of where the terracing happens, which can be useful. That makes us uh, move on to the mask by height. Now this one is pretty simple. It just uses the compute range again. So we click this and um, just like before, this ramp is determined what areas of the height are selected. So right now only the very topmost values and the very bottommost values are selected. And by moving these around, we can affect how much gets affected. 
or how much um, of the terrain gets affected, not affecting the effect. So there you go. Let's say we like this. And then we can again terrace it. And as you can see, only this section gets mostly um, adjusted. So here you can see we still have some terracing going on here, and that's because it kind of fades out. But if we move this over, you can see that really this is the only thing being affected now. And that moves us to the mask by curvature. Now this one is very specific to certain scenarios as it will take the peaks and um, very bottommost values, valleys in this case. So we, you can hit compute range and using that it will um, mask out certain ranges. So if we, uh, let's see, can't revert this to default. So yeah, you can just edit these and make sure that they mask certain things out. I'm pretty sure it starts off like this. So if you want to adjust it, you just slide these around and I just move the rightmost values to the left a bit, not too much because then you can see you get this basically selecting everything effect. Uh, and by doing this, you just select a bit more of those, those peaks and um, not as much from the valleys. So we can do that as well actually which moving the left part to the right. And the valleys aren't as effective, um, which is a pity. So I just recommend using the mask by slope for that. Now, let's say we think this mask is a bit too harsh um, because if we terrace it, um, yeah. So here I blurt the field out a bit and that's very spiky. So we can make this mask a bit softer by using a height field blur. So here I blurred the whole terrain, um, but we can also specifically blur the mask. So right now it is set to um, blur only the masked areas. And as you can see, it smooths those areas out a bit. But what if we say, well, I think that these are too sharp, these transitions. Well, we can use a height field mask blur. So let's just connect this up. We take the output from the curvature. We put it into the height field mask blur. And as you can see here, it's already getting blurred a lot. So we can increase this or decrease this. And let's say this is the value we want. We just take this output from the mask blur and put it into the height field blur. And as you can see, let's actually also put this into the first input. As you can see, um, it blurs it out a lot less, which can be useful in multitude of scenarios. So this is how you can um, kind of adjust your masks to how you want them to work. Now, finally, we have the mask by direction in the uh, mask by feature. And this one is pretty easy. Um, it just takes a certain direction and it'll, well, mask that part out. So let's say our goal angle is a bit different. And this really, it, this moving this around will illustrate what the mask by direction does. It simply just masks out a certain direction. Now let's say we have a goal angle of zero, we can spread it out. So by making this angle spread larger, you're basically affecting a larger angle. And again, there's a ramp here. So if we adjust this ramp, we can, for instance, say that we only want the side cones to be affected. So let's say we put this at about 0.6, we put this at about 0.4. Maybe move those out a bit more even. Yeah, there you go. So this can be very useful if you, for instance, want to make um, kind of stretch marks along the terrain. You can use this mask to, well, do that. And if we want to make these go farther out, we can do that. If we want to make them go in a bit more, it can also happen. And as you can see, we can still rotate it around. So uh, that about concludes the um, height field mask by feature. In the next video, I have one more on the uh, masking. And after that, we'll get started with erosion. So thank you very much for watching and until the next one.